Welcome back to Developer TV. I'm your host, Shantanu Agarwal. On today's show, we'll go through some really cool ways to navigate complex dialogue and advanced capabilities from the Watson Conversation Service. Returning back on stage here is my esteemed guest, Chris Damaris. Hey, Chris. Hey, Shantanu. So Chris, this show is going to be slightly different today, where we're going to kind of walk through different scenarios and showcase some of the new cool features that came out with Conversation. Can you give us, and me and the audience, a bit more background on what we're about to go through? Yeah, sure. So we're going to show a customer service bot for an electronics store. Okay. So think of things like helping to order a laptop, make returns on something. Um, and then, but within this bot, we're going to kind of show some more advanced capabilities that we have in the tool. Um, building a chat bot today can require a lot of uh, complex logic and so on, but we implemented a lot of things in the tool that made it easy to handle these situations. So let's kind of walk through a basic flow first. Okay. So in the try it out panel, it's going to say, who do I have the pleasure of talking to today? Yep. Give my name, Chris, if I can spell it right. It says, nice to meet you, Chris. How can I help? Um, so let's just go through the simple scenario of ordering a laptop. It's going to say, what brand do you prefer? I'll say HP. It says, what's your budget like? I'll say cheap. And it says, OK, Chris, I'll order your laptop from HP. That is cheap. Is this correct? So we're prompting user for confirmation. Yep. We say yes. And it says, awesome. Hold on a second while I place the order. Okay. So then in my app, I can go through and hook this up to my back end so it actually places an order when this happens with yep. all the variables included. It seemed pretty simple, but you know, Chris, I feel like some of the experiences we've seen out in the world is not all bots or not all flows are this simple. Would you agree? That's correct. I think people like to throw random things at it. They like, they like to start one way and they go the other. Um, so there are ways in which we can kind of think about that. And can I, can I now show you a scenario and see how it handles it? Sure. Let's okay. see. So I'm going to order a laptop and return a phone. OK. So who do I have the pleasure of speaking to today? I'll say Chris. OK. And then how can I help? We'll say order a laptop and return a phone. Now the bot says, sorry, I can only handle one request at a time. What would you like to do first? I see this all the time. I try to do multiple things. Bots don't seem to work. Um, so how, are we, how is this any different than anything else? True. So it, it's tough to handle a sentence where the user wants to do multiple things at a time. Okay. Right? Human agents will say, OK, I'll keep that in mind. But let's handle this first thing first. Yeah. So what we're doing here is, is detecting if multiple things are being said in a sentence, okay. and then asking them to continue on with a single thread. Great. So how are you doing that in the back end here? Yeah, so let's go into the dialogue tree. And I have the second node set up here called disambiguate. Yep. Um, and if I open this up, essentially what I'm checking for is if the top two intents returned yep. are above 40% confident, okay. then we're going to give this response of, sorry, I can only handle one request at a time. What Got would it. you like me to do first? And so why did you pick 40%? I picked it because I didn't have a lot of training data, yeah. and so my, my confidence scores in general are pretty low. Got it. OK. And can you walk us through the syntax here a little bit? Sure. So what I'm doing is I'm accessing our intents array, yep. giving the first intent based off the zero index, mm -hmm. um, accessing the confidence there, and saying when it's above 40%, then give this response back, okay. um, adding on another condition of the second intent with the same. Got it. OK. So what's, what is it asking me now? So now it says, what would you like to do first? Seems reasonable requests. Um, let's say I want to order this laptop. OK, so order laptop. Now, what brand do you prefer? Uh, we'll go with HP. Cancel. What's your budget like? Are you looking for cheapest? Actually, Modern I don't know yet. I, actually, I need to return my phone first, see how much credit I get, and then I'll decide what my budget's like. So can we get out of this? I need to start my return instead. OK, so a user would come in and say, cancel order. And so the bot says back, OK, canceling this order. Order has been canceled. Huh, interesting. So what just happened there? So there's a few things. Um, the main point, remember, slots are a way to collect information. Okay. And if it's not found, to keep prompting for it. So it's pretty tough in some cases in order to exit, um, except for we have this concept of managed handlers. OK. And so for those of you who are out there who haven't seen slots, there are other videos that talk about slots in more details, and we have a great uh, description of our documentation. So take a look at slots um, to understand how to set this up. So Chris, what is manage handlers? A handler, in a way, think of it as a global intent that's okay. across just this slot. Okay. So if at any point in the flow of this slot, the bot recognizes this intent cancel, yeah. then I'm going to give the response, OK, canceling this order. And then in the actual settings, I have this final option that says, and finally. So there's three options within this that say prompt again, yeah. skip current slot, and skip to response. Okay. What we're doing here is we're skipping to response. And so if the user says cancel, then we're going to forget the rest of the variables. Yep. So the user wants to exit and okay. then break them out of the slot. 
Now there's an, another thing to keep in mind as well. Um, if the user cancels, but they filled out two of the variables, and they keep on talking to the bot and they want to order it again, yep. because you had already saved those as context variables, yep. it'll remember that. But I don't want it to remember that. Right, so say you want to start a new order, yeah. you want that to be a fresh slate. Okay. So the way you make that happen is after this node, you want to have a jump to to a child node. Yeah. And this will set the condition to true, so it'll always fire right after. Got it. Um, so if the order is confirmed or if the order is canceled, the syntax will look the same. Um, we're taking within the context all the variables that we set within the slot and yep. setting those those to null. Makes sense. Restarting restarting back to new for the next for the next version. Exactly. So now, Chris, now I want to actually keep going down this flow. I want to return my phone. Okay. So let's say return phone. So it's going to prompt and say, what is your order number? Ah, so I've seen this one before. And my question to you then, Chris, is sometimes we have input that's not natural language. Whether it's alphanumeric, whether it's special symbols, how do we handle it in the system today? We can use something called a pattern entity. Huh. So pattern entity will detect a pattern based off what you give it okay. um, and then store that value. And so the benefit is, in a normal entity, you set a list of values, right? Yep. And then it can only be one of those values. Whereas in a pattern entity, you set what kind of pattern you're looking for, yeah. and then if it, whatever it detects based off that, it will return that value for you. Got it. Do you mind showing us what it looks like? Sure. So within the entities tab, I have two pattern entities set up here, email and order number. Okay. So within order number, all you have to do is say add new pattern value rather than add new synonym. Okay. Um, and then I have this, this pattern expression here. Got it. So essentially it's detecting the first three um, numbers and then first three letters after that, and then storing that as the, the expression. And so how do I figure this out? So in our documentation, we have more instructions on how to write these expressions for pattern values. Yes. Um, but also, I generally just Google how to implement something, yeah. um, and then copy and paste the expression there into here. OK. So let's say my order number is 123ABC. So 123ABC. Um, so it collects that information, says, thanks, let me look up that order. So then in your back end in your app, You'll take that information, you'll go look up the, the order and retrieve the information. Great. And how many and what's the next one? How many items would you like to return? Just one. Okay. What email address should I send the return label to? Great. So this is another pattern entity, it seems like. Correct. Could you walk us through that a little bit? Sure. So I have another um, pattern entity set up called email. So this this expression is a bit more complex uh, to capture to capture an email. But like I said, I'd usually just copy and paste this from Google. Um, and so if I say things like help at gmail.com. It'll capture that email address. So I know I don't have to define out every single possible email address. I just have to say the pattern of how email addresses are found. That's great. I feel like I can save so much more time using patterns, especially with some of these current processes which are uh, integrated into the back end system. So that's awesome, Chris. Um, anything else on this flow? Yeah, so th another important thing to, to note is I'm sending back the, the value found here in this, in this response. OK, we'll send the label to help at gmail.com. So actually storing a pattern value found is a bit different than a normal entity. Okay. So within this slot, the normal way is I detect, I look for this number, yep. I store that um, value in my context variable number, Got and it. then it works, right? Okay. But within a pattern entity, because the actual value that you're storing is just an expression, yeah. you want to save the value found, not the expression. And the way you you save the value found is you add this dot literal syntax onto the end. So literally saving the pattern. That's correct. <laughs> okay, makes perfect sense. Uh, so then, kind of going forward, are you sure you'd like to return this item? I say yes, and then it says okay. Send the return label now. Okay. So Chris, I'm going to throw you here a curveball. Okay. So sometimes I've seen out there people ask questions that may not necessarily be related to this flow, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you. I want to ask this bot what the weather's like. Okay. So what's the weather? So I didn't build anything out for weather, so it's going to say, I didn't understand. You can try rephrasing. OK, so I'm going to try rephrasing. Um, what's the temperature outside? So it says, can you reword your statement? I'm not understanding. Uh, is it sunny? I didn't get your meaning. Is it cold? So now the bot says, I'm having a tough time understanding you. I will get an agent to help you. Huh. So why did the responses change from before? So what I'm, I'm doing here is I implemented something called a counter. OK. So that if the bot doesn't understand the user a certain number of times, yeah. then we're going to take the user and escalate them to an agent. So the way you actually do this, 
is by creating a context variable that's a, that we'll, we'll call agent counter here yeah. on the node that you want to count from. So on my anything else node, I add this expression to add one to my agent counter variable. Okay. Right? And then in the node above this, I have a condition for when this context variable is above two, yeah. then I'm going to escalate to it. Got it. So that's basically what just happened here. That's correct. Okay. Now the last important part when you're setting a counter is yeah. that you want to set you want to create the counter at some point. Yeah. Set it to zero. So in my welcome node, I'm creating this context variable agent counter and setting it to zero right away. Got it. So what I take away from this and related to our earlier topics is every time you do do these special features, you do need to remember to reset it back to zero or null. Correct. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Anything else, Chris? I think that's about it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming out today. No problem. If you're building with conversation, go back to Workspace and try out these advanced practices. Check out our documentation for more information. And if you're new to conversation, sign up for a free account today. This is Developer TV. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.